I'm going to ask you, are you sorry? Are you sorry for what you did? Do you know what you did was wrong? Was it a mistake? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Crime Circus Cult. My name's Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always. Today, I present you Natalie Gonzalez. She's 32 years old, and she hurt her own mother with scissors and a hammer. Those are two household tools, and when I say hurt, she made her pass away. Apparently, she thought her mother was someone else breaking into the home, and that someone else happens to be her brother's ex-wife. Natalie has some psychological issues and mental health is super important in this world. And I know a lot of you out there watching this right now struggle with it or know somebody that's struggling. So shout out to all of you. I've previously released body camera video of Natalie's arrest and her pre-interview at the police department with a wonderful police officer. If you haven't seen those, those two come before this one, but it's not necessarily required if you just want to enjoy the interrogation. And when I say enjoy, you know I mean enjoy your education because this is strictly for educational purposes only. Stay tuned until the end of this video for an update on Natalie Gonzalez for the passing away of her own mother in Central Florida. Since I'm kind of chubby, I'm going to sit in the chubby chair. Oh, you're not as chubby as me. There's a chair here. What do you think? I can't fit in that one. Natalie, I'm Jason. Nice to meet you. Sorry, we're meeting on such circumstances. So I'm Detective Wood. This is Detective Bidding. Uh, your name is Natalie, right? Correct? It's, uh, how do you spell it? N-A-T-A-L-I-E. And your middle name? Marie. Your last name? R-I-E. And your last name? Gonzalez. G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z. Okay. And what's your date of birth? 12-5-1989. 12-5? 1989. Okay. All right. We wanted to talk to you a little bit, um, mainly about this incident, which is going to be case number uh, 21 i uh, 128622. Today's date is uh, December 11th, <clears throat> 2021. It is uh, 1407 hours. Uh, because we brought you here to the sheriff's office, we're going to read you your Miranda rights. All right. I just want to make you make sure you understand them. All right. So I'm going to read them to you. I'll have you read them as well. And I want to make sure you understand them. If you don't, just let me know. I'll explain them to you. And we'll yeah. talk over everything. That's fine. Right. I'm going to move this stuff. All right. So all this. That's okay. We're going to go slow and. Yeah. That's We're going to talk slow. So um, all this, I'm not worried about. That's why I exit all that out. So. Okay. Can you, can you read this? Or are you, you, like, I don't know if you're, are you able to see it? Do you wear glasses? I wear contacts. Wear contacts? Do you have them in? I have it. Okay, so you can you read it? You can see yeah. it? All right, it says you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yeah, that's fine. I want that to okay. say everything. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? I understand. All right. You are entitled to talk to a lawyer before and or during questioning. Do you understand? Yeah. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one will be provided before and or during questioning without charge. Do you understand? Yes? Okay. That, I just want to make sure you understand. Do you have any questions about any of those? I understand. All right. All, right. All that I need you to do, and this is just saying you understand those, is if you can initial by each yes. That's just saying I read them out to you, that you understand them. Okay. You left-handed? Yes. Okay. One more here. And I'll have you sign right here, and that's just saying I explained this to you, and that you understand it. I'm gonna sign this in front of you, so you know there's no trickery, anything like that. It's 11th December, 2012. I am a Detective Wood. 2139 is my badge number, and I've seen your ID, so. 
on the computer. All right. So, where do you, uh, where do, what's your address? Where do you live at? 109 Wendy Doon Court. 109 Wendy Doon Court? Yeah. Okay. Who all do you live with? My brother. Your brother? My niece. What's your brother's name? Roberto Gonzalez Jr. Okay, Roberto Gonzalez Jr. About how old is he? <clears throat> He's... Did I do something? I don't feel weird. No, I was just asking about your brother. He's 36. He's 36? Okay. And you said you live with your niece? Yeah. Is that your, uh, is that Roberto's daughter? Yes. Okay. Elena what? Gonzalez. Elena Gonzalez? Yeah. Okay. How old is she? She's um, 10. 10? Okay. And who else do you live with? My brother, Jacqueline Negron. Jacqueline Negron? Okay, and how old is she? 52, I think. 52, you think? Okay. Is that it? Just living with those three? Yes. Okay. And how many cars do you all have between the three of you guys, or the four of you guys? Two now. Two now? Yeah. What kind of cars do you have? Um, a Toyota, um, a Toyota hybrid, um, Camry. Mm-hmm. I think it's, uh, yeah, 2011, and, um, a, a <clears throat> Nissan Altima, I don't know what year. Nissan Altima? Who drives what? My brother drives, um, the Nissan Altima, sometimes ours, and, uh, when it breaks down, and, um, my mom drives, um... The Toyota? Yeah, and I drive it sometimes, too, when they allow me to. Okay. Where do you like to go? My go-to is Walmart all the time. The one on Osceola Parkway? Oh. Whoa. This chair's kind of iffy. All right. So we wanted to talk about kind of like with what happened today and uh, see if we can figure out, you know, what, what, what was going on. If you could, if you could walk us through through everything. Do you think you'd be able to do that? The day? Yeah. The night before? Yeah, the night before. If you want to start there. I told her all, um, but it's not all, but the night before, a year and prior to that, um, um, my brother and my mom would um, do things like gaslight and not, uh, like, put me down. And I told them to stop, and then it would get worse, and I would always end up hospitalized, and it got so worse, like, uh, I was overly medicated with, I don't even know, Seracle, she said, because she would manage my medication. Your mom would? Mm -hmm. And then she would give me hers, and then other things, and then I would be, I would just get, like, unconscious, like, and then I stopped them, and then she tried to, like, maybe, when I won't, would threaten to leave and say I want to go and I'm not going to say anything um, because I felt like they always try to want to kill me. So your mom and your brother? Okay. What, what were they giving you medications for? Like, what was the medicine you were taking for? Um, in the hospital, they diagnosed me with schizophrenia because, um, paranoid schizophrenia because I never said anything. I just let whoever speak, which is my mom, say everything, which wasn't true. Okay. So you don't think you're, you don't think you have that? I don't know if I do or not. You don't know if you do or not? Because I do hear voices when I get to the place where I get so um, scared and um, fear of my life. Um, that I hear like a voice, inner, I don't know if it's inner voice or voice saying that um, my mom is my brother's ex. It was always my mom, it, every time I would get admitted, it was always me thinking my mom was Rebecca, my brother's ex-wife. Was Rebecca? 
Vida, yeah. Is that Elena's mom? Yep. Okay, so you would think your mom was was Rebecca? Yeah, and that I would, if I did something <coughs> to her, and I got committed for that too, a lot. That's why I would go to the hospital as documented that. Okay, so which hospital would you usually go to? Osceola Regional Medical Center. Okay, and how long would you go there? Would, would uh, the ambulance take you there, or would your, would your family take you there? Um, recently, my family wanted me there. Um, because I would say, I want to say what you guys do, and, and then they would want me there even more. And then I just said, put me there then, just admit me. I told everybody. But I um, told the cops, but I just said I would, like I feared like for my life. Like the night before, I sent letters to, um, the gas station racetrack because she threatened me. And then I asked her, are you threatening to kill me? She would say, at times, like, uh... Who threatened you? My mom. Your mom? What'd she threaten you with? To kill me. Why'd she, why would she do that? I don't know. Okay. Do you, mer do you remember... Every time uh, I tried to go. Do you remember calling 911 this morning? Why did you call 911 this morning? Because I thought it ended. I thought that I would wake up and everything ended and it would all be like, oh, my mom is back up. And that uh, everything ended. Okay, what what ended? I would be free. That you would be free or your mom would be free? Me. Me? Free from what? Live my life. Okay. What happened before you called 911? I wasn't dialing right. You weren't dialing right? The phone? Because I didn't know her <coughs> password. And I was thinking she was Becca, and I just said, I thought she was. Okay, what did you do to Becca? I understand. We all do things that we regret, and we all make mistakes. But the thing is that me and him. It's hard for me to say because, because, um, because, um, Okay. Because I would never do that unless, unless I fear for my life and I made it known to everyone. I just said, admit me, help me. I, I, <coughs> I called, I even told people, I said, my, I fear for my life. My mom would just come randomly to scare me. And she heard that I did, I did at the bank, but nobody was helping me. I understand, but you called us for help. And we want to understand what happened. And it, like something that. happened with Becca, you know, with your mom. Uh, we want to understand. You called us for help. We need your help to figure out what happened. I know it's very hard to say. And we understand you're, you're sorry. We understand that mistakes were made. And I know it's very hard to say. But we need your help 
so we can help you and figure out what happened. Could you please tell us, or at least, you know, kind of give us an idea so we can figure out, because we, we, you know, we've walked through the house, we, we understand something happened, but we just, we don't know what. And we need your help to figure that out. And we know we we know that you want to help us because you called us there to the house. You called nine one one. I know it's very hard to say. I know. I don't want to believe it because why? I should have said something, but I did. I told people. You did. You called us. But I told other people too. I told my family. I told the bank, I told police before, but they said Baker at me. I begged to them to Baker at me. I understand. Can you, can you help? Can you tell us what happened though with, with your mom? Or Rebecca? You know, this, this, uh, before you called 911? I thought it would end. Can you tell us what happened in the bathroom? It would help I, us out a lot. I was sleeping because out of fear, every time I fear for my life, I would always sleep like, I, I can't say it, but I thought it would end. I didn't do it on purpose. Like, like, because I wanted to, I thought that that I would be free. I thought she really was Becca and that I would wake up from a bad dream and everything would be like different. Okay, so what did you do to, to help you wake up from that bad dream? I can't say it. I can't do 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 it. I know it's hard. That's, that's not me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. It wasn't you. You gotta tell us who did it. You gotta help us. Natalie, did you sleep with mom last night? I did. I was feared that she wasn't really sleeping. So you slept in the same bed, or did you sleep like in there? Slept in the same bed because I had a fear that she would do something to me. I couldn't sleep. I haven't been sleeping for days. You haven't slept in days? No. And I haven't taken the medication because I, I felt like it was poison. I was being poisoned. And I really was dying with my life. That's why I left letters at the racetrack saying I'm not a threat to myself or others, but I would defend myself for my life. So I thought that that if I did that, that, and I know it was wrong, and I know I, I should have just kind of admitted, and I should have spoke up, and I should have just went, but I asked for help. I did want to get him in, I begged to get him in. But I just say they would never see me again after. I begged to get him in. Did you sleep at all last night? I haven't slept in days. Out of fear that someone's gonna kill me in my sleep or something. Like, um, I haven't been out really out. Um, only sometimes special occasions, maybe not even. <clears throat> but I feel like I haven't trapped it for like 10 years. Just doing everything that my family told me to do. Think your family's helping you or hurting you? I tried to speak up about it. I called the police, but I wasn't ready. So I said I would lie for them if they didn't work, get in trouble. And then they just said Park Place. And since I had bad experience in Park Place, I said no. What What time did your your mom go to bed last night? She was really sleeping. She wasn't sleeping last night? No. What was she doing? She was saying, like, stop bothering me. I wasn't really bothering her. I was just saying, what time do you have to go to work? I was paranoid. Mm -hmm. But did she lay down to go to bed? She slept really well. I didn't sleep at all. What time did she lay down to go to bed, though? I don't know, 
because I, I activated my phone late. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I finally got a phone. And um, I talked to my dad. I let him know, too, that my mom threatened to kill me. And um, that's when uh, I was like, if you threaten to kill me again, I'm going to just tell someone because I'm not going to uh, be you know, threatened to kill. Like, and I want people to know that I'm not a threat to myself or others. And, um, but I will fight for my life. That's what I said. And then I got so paranoid. I haven't been taking my medication. And I don't know what type of medication I've been taking. You remember what time she got up? I didn't really look at the time. Was the sun up yet? The sun was up. Okay. What did she do when she got up? She went to the garage. And I um, did what I did out of fear. And I thought that she was back then. And it would end and I would wake up and everything would be... Be free, my brother would be free, and I'm like, like I saved them. Okay. So, was it in the garage that you did what you did? Bathroom, and I that's not me. Okay. I should have told her. So, what happened? I should have told her. I should have told her. So, what happened? At, but why did she go to the garage? She smoked cigarettes there. Okay. And I always go with her to talk with her. I was so paranoid because. She did threaten me, so I thought, uh, like I always do with all my hospitalizations or my psychosis, that she's Becca and that she's out to kill me. And usually I get really, really scared where I end up like, just leaving and then I, um, I end up getting admitted. Did, did you go to the garage with her while she was smoking? Did you talk with her at all? I did, but I was paranoid. I was like watching for her move, like, thinking she would kill me. What did y'all talk about? I don't know, because I was just thinking, like, uh, you know, like, I was going to defend myself and no one was going to kill me. And that's what I thought. And then I got to the mode where I did what I did. Okay. And I messed up, and I I don't think I can live with myself. Oh, well, I understand. I understand. Because but after the garage, that's not me. Where, where did y'all go after the garage? Did y'all go to the kitchen? That's not me. That's not me at all. I understand. That's not who I am. No, I understand. I'm a good person. I would never do that unless somebody threatened me, and I would never do it to my own mom. And then, like, like, like. Did your mom drink any coffee this morning? Yeah. Did y'all? She got mad at me because she told me to do it, and I said no. And usually, I do what she says. What she wanted you to make coffee? Yeah. Or she made coffee? She made coffee because I said I don't know where the coffee is. Okay. Did you drink any coffee? I didn't. I haven't drank or ate anything because I felt like she was poisoning me. Okay. Did y'all eat any breakfast? No. Okay. So uh, did y'all make coffee before or after you went to the garage? Before. Before? I should have told her. And then I would have got admitted. I always tell her. Okay. Yeah. So from the garage, after the, the garage, she was done smoking. She... She had her coffee, and then did she go back into the kitchen? No, she went to the bathroom. But every time like we like leave the bathroom door open, I was in fear of my life. Okay. Did you follow her to the bathroom, or did she go in there by herself? I followed her because I was paranoid, and then I had the voice inside that said, "Like fight for your life." And that she was Becca, and that I don't get it because, like, what she said, I didn't, like, I don't get it because she gave me the keys, she gave me, like, I didn't want medication, I had the keys, and I, I thought she was Becca, so I was like, I, I didn't get what was going on. Like, it was not me. Okay. What was your mom doing in the bathroom? She was going to do her hair. Just doing her hair? Like brushing her teeth, getting ready for the day, or no. just doing her hair? And, like, like, right now, I'm not, I'm, you're doing very well. You're doing good. You're okay. I 
thing is, is that I'm never going to be the same and my family is never going to forgive me. And my niece is going to think I'm a monster. I've already spoke with your family. Your family understands. Because I am a monster. You're not a monster. Yes, I am. Do you think if you were a monster, we'd just be sitting here talking to you like this? That God's not going to forgive me. All right, this man right here, this is Preacher Denning. He knows all about that stuff. But we all sin. We well, all sin. sin of all. I don't know. In the book, it says all sins are equal. It doesn't can't. matter. No. And Natalie, God forgives all sin. You know that. Nope. I'm asking, are you sorry? Are you sorry for what you did? Do you know what you did was wrong? Was it a mistake? I should have told her and she, she could have admitted me. And I asked to get admitted and I asked everybody for help. And I got like the place where I always get, where I get the, always is the same. She's Becca. And then I get fear. And usually I get the, like I have a breakdown and I end up in the hospital. But this time I was like, I'm not gonna have a breakdown because I didn't want to end up there again because I had a bad experience and I get nightmares and I had nightmares. And it's always for the fear of my life, fear of my life, ever since I got home. I understand. Just Listen, your family understands and I still love you. No. Nope. We've already talked to them. I can't look at them. I can't already, look at myself. I already talked to Nico. He talked to Roberto. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're being still. It's my mom. It's my mom. I love my mom. Like, best friends. I told her everything. I should have told her because I tell her everything. Every time I get to that place, I tell her I think you're back, and I didn't. And now I got to live with that, and I can't live with it. I can't live with that, that I did that. I can't. That's not me. I should have told her, I felt like you're Becca. I feel like you're trying to kill me, but I did tell her, but she stayed quiet. And then she put more fear in me. And then she did give me and want me to take a medication that was Seracol mixed with Suprexa, which if you have two of those, I know that you're not supposed to take double because my doctor just said, stop the Seracol, take the Suprexa. Mm -hmm. But she was giving me her medication. I don't even know if it was Seracol, so I stopped taking it, I paranoia, because I felt weird, and all I would do is sleep, 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 unconscious. And then one time I didn't take it and I saw her washing me while I was sleeping. And then put movies and rerun them. If you try to escape again, I'll kill you. Can you tell me about the hammer? About where you got it from? The thing is, is that when my mom threatened me, I told her that I, I would fight for my life and she just stayed quiet. Why did she say there was a threat to you? That she would kill me. Did she say that in the garage? No, not that. In the bathroom? No, before, the night before. I said, am I gonna have a rough night? And she said, yes. I said, what? And she's like, no, I never said that. Like, she'll say it. And then she'll, like, scare me with songs or with movies. Replay it all over and over and over. Skip again or I'll kill you. And I was like, are you threatening me? And she'll just stay quiet. Are you going to kill me? And I said to everyone, I said to my dad, even the night before, I wanted to get admitted. I begged to get admitted. But I said, if I get admitted, you're never going to see me again. Because I just wanted to say the truth. I felt what she was doing. What's your dad's name? His name is Roberto Gonzalez Jr. And I also... No, Jr.'s your brother, right? I mean, Roberto <coughs> Gonzalez <coughs> okay. Sr. Gucho. 
his nickname. I called him. Okay. And um Why why did you cut her hair? I cut her hair because I thought that she did this to me. That's how I feel. Because that Becca would do something like that because Becca cut my niece's hair unevenly. And mm -hmm. it gave me a breakdown again where I thought my mom was back. And there was a prior incident that they covered up that I thought my mom was back and I stabbed her in the leg and they all covered it up. I felt like they covered it up because... They didn't want you to get in trouble? No, because of that. No? Why do you think they covered it up? That's every time I try to like gain my independence. There's always like something. I end up in the hospital where I threaten to leave and tell the truth about like the wounding myself in other places and then um I think they covered up because they love you and they didn't, they didn't want you to get in trouble. How long ago was that when you accidentally stabbed your mom? Four years ago. Four years? Okay, so was today's incident, was that like, uh, was it was this like similar to like four years ago? It was similar but different because I was like, this time I'm not going to go to that place because I was born in that place every day. Mm -hmm. Like the, the psychosis that I get with a lot of stress and like um, the stuff that went on at home and, uh, and uh, this time I was like, I'm not going to get it, I want to play for my life. Mm -hmm. I always said I'm a fight for my life. And then whenever I say it, my mom would just stay quiet and like, um, she would be like, um, what songs and um, movies? Um, like she'll be like, not comb my hair, but like, uh, like in the bottle there would be, um, like it would sting and my hair would be like, um, sting because uh, it was like a detainer, but it was, I don't know what was in it. And um, it's just a lot. And I haven't been out like really uh, living my own life. And whenever I try, things get worse. I haven't like really lived my life in, in 10 years. I feel like I've been kidnapped. That's what I go to. Like I'm kidnapped. My brother's kidnapped. And my niece and my mom's wife. I understand. So, how much of her hair did you cut off? Oh, I just cut it off because I thought that she's a Sunni. Was this, was this before or after you, you hit her with a hammer? I don't know. I can't believe it's the that I did it. So my mom. Was this when, was she laying down in the shower or was she still standing up when you cut her hair? I think it's just so weird because It was just like, like, uh, okay. I know it's hard. That's why I'm, I'm here trying to help. Like, I can't, I'm not, like, I'm not, right, like, it's not really registering. I still believe that she's back up. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to believe that I did that to my own. I understand. Because I'm not like that. I don't if think somebody, you are. You could ask anyone that wouldn't hurt a fly unless somebody threatened you were like for real. I understand. Like then I would be like, you know, paranoid and I didn't take my medication. And if I don't take my medication. Let me ask you this. Why are you all wet? I don't even know how the shower got on. You so say the shower was on? It was on, but I felt like everything was like a dream. Like it, it wasn't real. It, it was like, it wasn't real. And I was gonna wake up from a puddle. Like I always thought that something was like gonna wake me up because every time I would get my psychosis, I would hear my name, Natalie, Natalie. And I thought that would like happen. And then I would wake up and everything would be like, like, um, I don't know, like, like, Becca, you know, 
Like I, you know what I mean? Like I, I was held captive, like I felt kidnapped and I, I felt like, um, I don't know, my let's, bank. Let's say it is, let's say it is Becca, okay. My bank was, um, compromised my, all my emails, my phone, everything was taken from me. And I ended up in the hospital, and it was not a good experience, and I ended up worse when I came back. Nightmares of fear for my life all the time. So this morning, do you remember how many times you hit Becca with a hammer? I didn't believe that she was, you know, I, I wanted to see her. I'm talking about Becca, though. Becca. How many times did you hit Becca with a hammer? Becca? Do you think? I don't know. Do you remember? I didn't believe it to be true. I know. Because but... I was just seeing... Do you remember where you hit I was her at? I seeing it. I don't want to talk about it. I know, but you need to help us. Especially... Because you called us, remember? Especially, I didn't see what I wanted to see. I know. That she would be Becca. I know. know? And that... Because it wasn't Becca, it was your mom. Yeah. That's, what, that's why we had to try to figure it out. I don't believe I know, but unfortunately it's true. And now I have to live with that and I can't live with myself. Knowing but, that. But we need your help. I should have told her and she just would have admitted me, but I begged to be admitted. I wasn't taking my medication. And when I don't, that's what I get. Can and I, I do. Can I ask you this and you just give me a yes or no answer? Would that help? Okay. Did you stab her with the scissors? I don't want to talk about it because I already know what I did and I just want to go to jail and that's it. I'm just, like I said, we just, we need help from you. I'm not okay. I don't know one would be okay after doing that. But we want to try to help you. I haven't been okay for a very long time. I asked for help from everybody. I even said it the night before. <clears throat> but I didn't, I didn't plan that. It just came, like, the first time. Like, Would you be able to write it? Is writing it easier? I should have took my medication. I know. I should have got baked at it. I should have told them. And I did. I told my dad, I told the people, I told people already, I told them, I begged them to admit me. Well, you need your help now, because we need to know what to be able to tell your family. I can't say it. We have to know what happened to your mom. The only one that knows what happened is you. I don't want to believe it to be true. If I say it, it'll be true. Because I thought she was Becca. I would never do that to my own mother. I love her mother, she's my best friend. I tell her everything and I should have told her. But I truly believe she was Becca. Like I always do. And that's why I end up in the hospital all the time. Is because I always believed that. And then I made sure I go and I didn't speak up. I spoke up, but I didn't speak up to the person that I always speak up to. I tell her everything. And I made the biggest mistake of my life by not doing that. 
And I didn't take my medication, and I should have took that too, because I wouldn't have got to that place. So can you tell me what happened to Becca then? People with Becca want to hurt you. I thought I was kidnapped. You thought Becca kidnapped kid. you? Yeah, I kidnapped my brother and my niece, and that if I did that, that they would be free and I would wake up like uh, my psychosis all the time. And I didn't take my medication, and I didn't speak up to the person that I always speak up to when I feel that way. I got into the and then she did threaten me, but I still love my mom. I'm not going to talk. Of course. Talk. I'm not going to, I, you know, I still don't want to say that she did things, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want to say that about herself because I love her. She's my best friend. I don't want to believe it to be true. I want to see her right now. See you. <clears throat> so obviously, you didn't mean to attack your mother. I swear to God, I am not like that. I don't have those feelings unless someone threatens me with my I life. I swear to God, I asked everybody for help. I asked the police. I asked everybody. I asked my mom. I begged to be admitted. I know. Huh? And I should have took my medication, and I should have just told the person that I always tell, my mom, my best friend, and I shouldn't have believed in my... I just, I got to understand. So my you, thoughts, those voices, I, I shouldn't have believed in them. They were so strong that I just... So Natalie? I just, like I... Like the first time. So Natalie? Natalie, look at me. I can't because right. I don't want to look at anybody. All right. I just got to gotta understand, okay? So, so you weren't trying to hit your mom with a hammer. My mom's still alive. You were, you were trying to hit Becca. Yeah. Okay. So you hit Becca with a hammer. Mm -hmm. Where did you hit Becca at? Or where do you remember I hitting Becca? I don't want to talk about it because it's something uh, I know. It's going to make it true. Then I don't want to talk about it. Now we're, talking, not we're talking about it's Becca. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Okay, it's not true then. It's not true. You say we're talking about a dream here. Becca. It is Becca. It was Becca. We're talking about Becca. Mm -hmm. yep. All right? Yeah. Me and you, we were talking about Becca right now. I don't want to talk. I can't talk. Mm. It was Becca. It was Becca. It was Becca. Okay. We're talking about Becca. It was Becca. What happened to Becca? Can you tell me what happened to Becca? No, because I can't see it. I'm, I don't want to see it because that was not me. I'm only talking that about Becca. That was not me. That was not me. I would never hurt my mom because I love my mom. Ask anybody. Ask my brother. I do anything mom. and everything for my mom. I would never hate her or nothing. Not I like, love my mom either way. Even if she, I told her I'm loyalty. Even if nobody's talking about me, I always defended her. Like, no, even though she did the thing she did to me, it doesn't matter. My mom is still alive. Becca is not. Well, your mom loved you too. That's why I'm, I'm not talking to, talking about your mom. I'm talking about Becca. I know she loved me. But the thing is, is that I can't live if I say what I did because I don't want to believe it to be true because it was Becca. Okay, it was Becca. Because I swear to God... But I, then, I gotta know what happened but to Becca. Then, but then, because what you did, you were trying to do to Becca. But then, it was too late because she didn't turn into Becca like I thought it would. I thought that she was like a disguise. That's what I always think. Like she's just like brainwashing me to believe that she's someone she's not, and that I'm so brainwashed that I think that my life is the way it is, but it's not. Do you understand? Mm hmm So I thought that if it did, that, that Becca would come out and appear. 
But did, then it was just... So did you, did you hit back in the head trying to, like, get the disguise off? Because I didn't see it. I didn't see the blood. I didn't see anything. Okay. So you didn't I see any blood. I thought she was still alive, breathing. Okay. I so thought that... Was this after, after I you thought that, that I was on something and that... That I... That I was, like, not... It wasn't real. Mm-hmm. And that... That I... That it wasn't real. Okay. And that I was going to wake up. And I was just waiting for me to wake up. But then it was just... Like it was a dream. Like it was a dream. So in this dream, do you remember where you hit Becca first? I don't want to talk about it because I don't want it to believe it's be true. Because... I know you don't want to talk about it, but we need, we need your help. The thing is, is that, you know what's sad? Because to us, this that is like a puzzle. It is. That's how I feel my whole life was like. And like, what's sad is that, 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 you know, like, like, like what my mom said, which was too late, it, it was like, that's why I thought it was a dream, because I was like, she was saying things that, like, oh, I'll give you my medication, I'll give you the keys. And I was just like, what? Did, did Becca, or did she say anything to you while this was going on? Was she saying anything to you? I didn't believe it to be true, because I thought she was back all the way again. What, what did she say? I'm your mom, but I didn't believe it, and I should have believed it. And that's why I can't live with myself, so it just lock me up. Okay. Do it very well. I'm circular, so... So she said, I'm your mom? Because I, I thought my mom... Every time... I thought Becca killed my mom. Mm -hmm. And then my mom was already dead. Ask my brothers. I would always say, my mom died. Because I always have the fear of my mom dying because she's my best friend. So, you know, she's been sick, and then I feel like, you know, and uh, so that's my whole thing always is that. Ask them. That's what it is all the time. That's why they say, do you feel like mom's Becca? That's why my mom kept saying, do you feel like I'm Becca? And it, and it didn't help me when she said that. But she was only doing it to to prevent me from getting there, and I failed to tell the person that I always saw, and I believed in the delusion because I didn't take my medication, and did she say anything else to you? She did threaten me, but I don't think like. I'm, I mean, I'm while everything was going on today, while in the bathroom, did she say anything else to you other than I'm your uh, mom? You have the keys, you have your medication. I just, I just didn't understand. I thought, like, well, you're Becca even more. Because if you know me, that's not what I wanted. I just wanted to be free, and and I should have never play into my... Is that what you told her, that you wanted to be free? <clears throat> what you, would you I tell just her? Said, I just thought, like, she was still alive. I thought that she was still alive and that I wasn't seeing it. And it was, it's like, I can't believe in myself that. That I, that I went all the way and I didn't, but I spoke up, I told people. I begged to get admitted, and I said it. I just always, like, don't want to put that, because I always get blamed for everything. Like, you're the blame, you're the blame, you're the blame, you're the blame. And I just don't want to, you know, I don't know. I should have just said it. She always asked me, do you think I'm Becca? And I got freaked out even more. And, and that's where, like, that's why, I, 
and I can take my medication and then Listen, I'm going to ask you again, all right? I just, I just need you to say yes or no, okay? I need your help. Are you gonna, can you help me? Becca. I know. I'm going to ask Becca. questions about, I'm going to ask questions about Becca. Becca. Can you help me? This is my mom's waiting for me. Can you, can you help me with questions about Becca? Would you be able to answer questions about that? To help me out? See, I don't believe that. I don't. I don't think your family believes that either. I don't want to see that. Especially my niece. So. She's going to think I'm a monster. I don't think your niece is going to think that at all. Yep. And she's going to suffer. I think... You are very important so to your niece. Because I don't want to believe my mom. Because I need my mom. I always needed my mom. My mom's my go-to, my best friend. I think the you, only one that I talk to. I think you are everything. very important to your niece. She, she you forget about me. Mm, no, I don't think she will. I think you she guys are very close. You. Are you and Elena very close? Very, very close. I told her. Very close. I told her that I was in fear in my life and that if anything happened, I, I, I should have went to the hospital. I should have taken my medication. I need you to think about Elena. I need you to be able to help us thinking about her. So you gotta remember, like, this, is, this is her grandmother as well. That's what she calls her. Mima? And they're going to be looking to me to be able to, you know, answer questions. My mom's still alive. And I want to help your family. They want to know questions about Becca. But I need your help to be able to answer those questions. Because a lot of these questions only you know the answers to. Did you hit Becca with a hammer? I don't want to talk about it. Did you stab Becca? I don't want to talk about it because it just, it just please don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. I know, but I need your help. Don't do this to me, please. Because I don't want to go back there. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. Mm -mm. Mom's waiting for me. I should have took my medication. I should have got a minute. Awesome. All right. You want to drink some of your drink or anything, or we're gonna take a quick break? Do you gotta go to the bathroom or anything? Mm, don't leave me alone because because um. No, we're gonna. I always go be with my mom, and now I don't wanna. Um, You're not gonna be alone. I don't wanna. Um, I don't wanna be alone. No. And I I don't wanna. Um, they're gonna be alone. Deputy Robinson's right here. We're right here. I shouldn't have told her. No. I always tell her. I always tell her everything. Everything. Every single thing. I tell my mom everything. Everything. Can you use the bathroom, dear? No. You okay? I should have taken my medication. And I should have got admitted. I asked everybody to admit me. I said <clears> it. <throat> I begged for it, but I did not. You want Deputy Robinson to come and sit in with you? All the way. I, 
ask my family, but I don't know they're already gonna think I'm a monster because I already know. I already know. Because you told me already. They don't think right? you're a monster. Right. I am a monster because what I did is unforgivable. God's not going to me. I'm going to go to hell. I'm telling you what they told us. They said you're not a monster. I don't want to see them. And they said that they love you. I'm just telling you what they said, okay? It's a shame. It's a shame. No, that did not happen. Did not Mom was waiting for me. Right? It's okay to be sad. And your family still loves you. My mom was waiting for me. Right? 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 She's waiting for me. She's waiting for you in heaven. No, this is a bad dream. This is just a dream. Let's take a little break, okay, here? You won't be alone. We'll be right here, all right? Come on. Thank you for watching this Crime Circus Cult presentation. I do appreciate it. As you can see, Natalie finally got her Coca-Cola. And she really didn't seem to enjoy her Coca-Cola all that much. She probably thought it was poison. Natalie is in a psych ward right now. Her trial's been postponed because she's not fit for trial. If convicted, she is facing life in prison. However, she may be able to be released one day if she's found not guilty by reason of insanity. Please check out my Cash App or Patreon or YouTube membership if you want to support what I have going on here at Crime Circus and the Crime Circus Cult. Your views, comments, likes, and support mean the world to me. There's not too many YouTubers as big as I am running multiple membership programs and still responding to as many comments as I possibly can. That's how much I appreciate you. Let's get the Crime Circus Cult to 100,000 subscribers so me and you can get a second award and I'll show it to you right here in the intro. For that to happen, I'm gonna need your help to watch more videos on this channel. Share it with your friends and family on Facebook. Always smash the like button. Let the videos play through. Leave as many comments as you feel like. You can never leave too many comments here at Crime Circus. And until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.